Hey folks, Craig from the Vinyl Record Player. Uh, yeah, I'm here with another edition of Whack a Soul. Uh, I'm here to uh, talk about five random records that I will select right after the break. So hey, buckle up. Okay, and we're back. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this Whack a Soul. You're, you're unfamiliar. I just basically select five records from random locations, very uh, inspired by uh, Norman Maslow's uh, Wacka Mole video uh, set. Except it just so happens that all this music, straight soul, a lot of funk. Uh, it's uh, it's all funky music. Uh, but anyway, enough talk. Let's get awkward. Select five, as we do. One. Uh, let's get some from in here. From over here, oh, big stacking. We're moving stuff. Right, we'll just go with something like this, and then something in the random. I think we ended up with six. I think we did. I think we did. Okay, okay. This is a pick. We got some. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Oh, that's weird. Very strange. Uh, just actually did a vinyl finds on this one. Not sure how this one came out. I have listened to this already. Joe Simon, uh, Drowning in the Sea of Love, uh, was kind of his, uh, I think his big hit. Uh, did a lot of recordings with uh, Gamble and Huff. Uh, was not on the Philly International. He was on the Spring Label, actually, for a good uh, amount of time. This one I just did a vinyl finds on, so check my previous vinyl finds. I'm not going to talk too much about this record because, uh, yeah, it's basically a two-record Canadian press compilation of Joe Simon's work. Uh, all fantastic stuff. You can find one of these. Uh, you should. You should buy it. Uh, how about Al Green Explores Your Mind? I'm not sure. I have actually two copies of this. I'm, I'm saving one for a potential VCLT. Uh, but, wow, this is uh, anything in this period. This, I think you could maybe even call Al's last outright classic LP, but to be fair, even beyond there, um, ah, no, you couldn't, because you got to talk about the Bell album, uh, actually almost, there's even, I'm learning stuff about Al Green now, where I'm like, I can't believe it, but like, his 80s work is of quality, I, I don't know what, I mean, it's, but it's not to explore your mind, this one's of course got, uh, is it Shala, Shala La, Make Me Happy, oh, that's, Take Me to the Rivers on this one, uh, one Night Stand, The City, I'm Hooked on You, it's a good one. You see this one, I, I think I, I ended up getting the second copy because it, it was uh, one of those Discogs deals where I'm ordering a bunch of stuff and it would have cost like zero cents to ship and it was like I'm selling this record like in very good condition for like $5.99. I'm like, whoa, 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 what do you, I gotta take that value and I did. Uh, this one I just picked up, uh, I have not heard it on vinyl. But I made a point actually to uh, give LTDs something to love a bit of a shot. And you know what? Uh, like I listened to it on the on the streaming. It actually was really good. I uh, picked up this record for like three bones. Um, you know, obviously they're all wearing like kind of crazy sort of space, funky space uh, outfits, I guess, on the cover. And uh, oh, let's see. We got the planet that's actually in the shape of a heart. Anyway, whatever, this is uh, 77, this is uh, part of the full, full PF uh, zone, meaning party funk, real deep party funk. I put this one on, I was like, whoa, it is uh, basically party funk on a record. Uh, if you're, you know, if things are getting a little stale around your jam, just pop this uh, Something to Love from 77 by LTD on. Woo, uh, funky times ensue. Um, but yeah, very much a party funk album and fun. Uh, anyway, I remember listening to this one. Very good. Uh, this one's been coming up a lot in my life lately. Anyway, this is a uh, 1980s re-release of uh, The Dramatics. Uh, first LP, What You See Is What You Get, obviously with the nice tuxedos. I've shown this one actually recently. Uh, this is a really astonishing record. And you know what? I, I just listened to uh, their 1976 album, The Dramatics, uh, Joyride, the other day. You know what? Fantastic. I, I ended up buying a $3 copy. It's junk. Uh, I gotta throw it out, which is unfortunate. Uh, but I've seen Joyride in the wild a million times and been like, I wonder if the dramatics are still good in 76. Oh, they're good. They're very good. 
This is uh, their debut LP. Uh, obviously, uh, writer producer Tony Hester. Uh, this album is magnificent. This is cover to cover a classic. Uh, and Tony Hester, uh, who died, I think in 1980. I'm not sure if it was a car wreck or I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, all of his work with uh, the Dramatics really good. Like I say, even that uh, 1976 uh, LP, Joyride. Uh, I'm looking for another copy now because uh, wow, outstanding stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, the dramatics, what you see is what you get. It's my only Lamont uh, Dozier LP uh, right there. Uh, I, I always like showing this one because like, it's just like, oh, Lamont just hanging out, hanging out with really attractive women. I mean, dude's wearing a tuxedo. I mean, I, I can't hate on the tuxedo for certain. Uh, but this is, a, this one was an okay record. Uh, I, the, what I wanted was uh, the LP that I still continue to seek out is, uh, I'm not even remembering what it is. I'll put that, the title of it, but it's got like such classics as Fish Ain't Bitin'. Uh, oh man, there, there's a bunch of really great songs on his LP from 74 or, or 73. This one I think is from 77. Very good, very good. Uh, if anything, I think that the first side was a little ballad heavy and uh, I don't like to start the party that way. But uh, on, on the B, on side two, he starts to funk it up, show us, you know, Lamont being a little bit more funky, a little bit less ballady. So uh, it's an okay record. Uh, it's not my choice. Like I say, it's, it's for, not Black Bach, which again, if I saw that in the wild, I probably would buy that anyway. But there's his, uh, and also Breaking Out All Over uh, is on, on that uh, LP that I'm thinking about from 73, 74. Ooh, that's a good one. Still looking for it. This one's okay. Uh, and on the Edsel label, this of course is a, probably a, a British repress uh, from probably, the, I think this was from 1990. Paul Kelly, uh, really kind of an under, uh, an under um, uh, appreciated and underrated singer actually, uh, and songwriter actually. Uh, Stealing in the Name of the Lord was I think pretty much his biggest hit, but he did a, a lot of songs that people covered like Come Say, Lay Some Lovin' On Me. Um, who did I hear? I'm, I'm, I'm misplacing who I just heard uh, do that song. But uh, yeah, Paul Kelly, one of those st soul stars that just didn't wasn't even really a soul star, but uh, wrote a lot of great songs and a uh, great performer. Anyway, that was uh, a really interesting whack of soul. I've got to admit, uh, very strange selections. Uh, everything was kind of okay, but um, at any rate, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hey, I'll see you on the next one.